Now I'm going to break uh, section uh, 50 down into about three or four um, short videos that you're going to need to watch all of them in order to be able to do the homework over this section on trees. Uh, let me start off with some terminology in this short first video. Uh, first I want to talk about something called cycles. So consider the following graph. I'm going to graph these um, vertices here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, and I'm going to I'm going to attach them in this way. So let's say I start at a particular vertex and I begin a walk that goes around uh, a sequence of edges where I end up where I started with. I'm going to refer to that kind of path, although technically I wouldn't call it a path because I end where I started, which means I repeat a vertex. So let's call it a walk. A walk is going to be, um, that starts where it ends, is going to be a cycle. Um, you can also think of it in terms of just a graph by itself that I can start in one place and follow all the edges and end up back where I started. So in this case I could start here, follow a walk around the outside and end up there where I started. Let's come up with a formal definition of what I mean by a cycle. So in this case the cycle is going to be the graph induced on those vertices that I walk around. Okay, So definition. A cycle is a walk of at least three vertices where the first and uh, last vertex are the same. That's what I mean when I call a cycle. And actually, even more formally, I'm going to add to this. Sometimes I'll also use the word cycle to refer to the subgraph itself. So a cycle can be thought of as a walk or a cycle can be thought of as the whole subgraph that is a cycle. Uh, so in this case, up here, the cycle could be this walk that starts here and moves along these edges, or you can think of the cycle as just that group of vertices and their edges, so that's what this subgraph then looks like. Okay. Now my notation for a cycle on n vertices is going to be C sub n. Remember we've used the K sub n notation for a complete graph on n vertices. Now a cycle is going to be C sub n. So this up here then would be C sub 6 because it is a cycle on 6 vertices. Note that some graphs are acyclic. When I say acyclic, I mean they do not contain a cycle, contains no cycle. Now, both of the graphs at the top of the page here are cyclic. So what do we mean when we say a graph is acyclic? Um, we mean that there's no way to follow a cycle anywhere in the graph. And we give the name a forest as the name of an acyclic graph. Now, why do we call it a forest? Well, we're going to be looking at a type of um, graph that we're going to call a tree. So, a forest can be thought of as a group of trees. So, what do I mean by a tree? A tree is going to be a type of graph that is a acyclic graph, but to be specific, we want it to have only one component. So we're going to call a tree, this definition right here is for this word right here, a definition of a tree is a connectic acyclic graph. So let me look at a few examples, and we'll see several examples as we go through this. But let's say I have only one vertex, n equals 1. That right there is a tree. Um, because you can't have any other edges. So that's boring. Let's try n equals 2. So in order for it to be connected, they need to have an edge between them. That's a tree. Now n equals 3, if I have three vertices, the only type of tree that's possible is a path like this. 
so on this one right here, if I were to draw an edge right here, it would no longer be acyclic. I would be able to find a cycle. But as long as only two of the points or vertices are connected, then it's acyclic. There's no way to follow a cycle. There are no cycles in this graph. Now, if I've got four vertices, one way to make that a tree is to follow a path along the four vertices. So on the first one, this is possible. Uh, but also, the second option is possible, the one that's right here. So neither one of these have any cycles in them, so they would be considered trees with four vertices. Now what would make something a forest is if you had disconnected groups. So you, you consider maybe, for example, um, I'll come off all of this side um, right over here. Let me draw one. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. All right, put a bunch of vertices out here. So as long as there's no cycle, then you've got basically two trees there, but as a whole, this whole thing right here would be a forest because it is not connected, right? There are actually two separate components to that, but neither one of those components have any cycles in them, so that's what makes it a forest, is it's a group of trees. But it's acyclic because there are no cycles. There are none of these kinds of paths where you can start and end at the same vertex.